anything to do with the true Bible believers in building the house of God. They are an organized denomination of unorganized people. The hour of restoration has already come and the rebuilding has already begun. God has restored us back to his word. He has called us to his word, the temple of the living God. The true revelation of Christ is the foundation of IT, and it is around this temple that we, the true worshipers of God, by God's grace, are building a city with a wall to keep IT. We don't need any ism group to help us build. We don't even need the Branhamites to help us build for they are also our adversaries. They are very foxy, they'll present themselves in a comely manner like true believers, but their motive is clearly discernible, to subvert the work in the assembly of saints and to bring them under their ism, Branhamism. Can two walk together, except they be agreed? Amos chapter 3 verse 3. The enemies may call us a city of rebellious people in the New Jerusalem, we are building a bad city, Ezra chapter 4 verse 12. Obviously, because it is not to their taste. Little flock. Like the Hebrew children, we Bible-believing Christians were once in bondage. And now for a little space grace hath been showed from the Lord our God, to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a nail in his holy place, that our God may lighten our eyes, and give us a little reviving in our bondage, Ezra chapter 9 verse 8. We, who have come out of the system of mystery Babylon, now have a little space to get nailed down into God's holy word that we may be enlightened and revived from our bondage. Thank God for extending his mercy to us, cf. Ezra chapter 9 verse 9. However, we understand that only a little flock will escape from the hold of Babylonianism. We are now in the 21st century. Do we have to go another decade? I hope not. Israel has been a sovereign nation since 1948. How many more years do we have? How many more years is God going to give to the Gentiles before he turns to the Jews? The Bible says, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled, LK 2132. A generation of people is about 70 to 80 years, CF, PSA, 90 to 10. I believe that God is going to cut short the time and will be turning to the Jews. God has shown many signs and wonders in this end time. Christians know that the time of the end is near and that Christ is coming. They expect to take the flight in the rapture when Jesus returns. But how can they take that flight without preparation? There are things to procure and things to set in order. We need the token of the Holy Spirit and the revelations of the word to be set right in our life in Christ. God has given us a message for that purpose to prepare us for the rapture. We have the message, like the Hebrews, we must stop trespassing against the Lord and we must stop committing spiritual fornications of his word with the religious traditions of men. These things are abominations in God's eyes and he has delivered us from them, cf. Ezra chapter 9 verses 13 to 15, 10 to 2. If we go back to these abominable sins we would surely die in our sins, cf. Heb.6, 1 to 8. God has called us back to our homeland. Our homeland is not in any of the denominational churches. Unless we come back to our homeland we can never have a true temple and true worship nor can we ever build a holy city. That's the truth, but now that we are in our homeland, God has also given us the temple with its foundation. Oh how precious is the word of the Lord. Right now, we must build walls around this word of God. We must have the walls of the truth ministry of the ascension gifts of Christ, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. What are the walls for? They are needed to keep the word of truth and the true believers in the revelation of Jesus Christ and to keep the enemies out. The holy things are separated from the unholy things, 2 Cor.6, 14-7-1. to God is using the fivefold ministry to perfect the bride. The message of William Branham can never perfect the bride. His message was a decree for us to separate ourselves from man-made creeds and dogmas, and to restore us to the word. When we are in the word, God will raise up the walls around the city and perfect us within the city while keeping out all the religious trash. Amen. The Book of Nehemiah The Book of Nehemiah records history of the rebuilding of the walls of the city Jerusalem after the temple foundation was laid. It emphasizes on the leadership of Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls in troublous times, cf. Dan.9, 25. Note, the Book of Nehemiah is not a sequel to the Book of Ezra. Those who believe so follow the traditional chronology created by Ptolemy who placed the rebuilding of the walls some 60 to 70 years after the temple was completed and dedicated. If the walls were not being built at the same time, what was there to prevent the adversaries from destroying the temple? 
They have assumed the Artaxerxes of Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1 to be the third or fourth Persian king to rule Medo-Persia after Cyrus. In contrast to Josephus, the Jewish historian, who gave only six kings, Ptolemy estimated that there were at least a total of ten kings from Cyrus to Xerxes, whose chronological positions were even questioned, and sometime, reshuffled by other historians. These kings altogether reigned a total period of 205 years. But according to Jewish and Persian traditions, they were slightly over 50 years. The Bible, however, shows us that there were four more kings after Cyrus, the fourth being Xerxes who fought the Grecians, Dan.10, 1, 11-2. The names Ahasuerus, Darius and Artaxerxes are all appellatives like the name Pharaoh and were used by the different kings of Medo-Persia. The words of Nehemiah the son of Hachaliah. And it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan the palace. That Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 The enemies had come and broken down the walls around the city of Jerusalem. They had also burnt the gates. As a result there were many breaches along the walls. When Nehemiah, who was the cupbearer to the Persian king in the palace of Shushan, heard the tragic news about the city of Jerusalem, he was so concerned that he fasted and prayed for several days. Nehemiah often responded to problems with prayer. Convinced of the promise of God in his restoration of Jerusalem, Nehemiah was thus concerned to seek for its fulfillment. Likewise, we ought to fast and pray for God's truth to be revealed to us in this hour. His heart was crying out for the walls of Jerusalem to be restored that he was willing to give up his comfortable and stately position in the palace to return to his homeland to rally the people to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Nehemiah typified our Lord Jesus Christ who left his glorious position in heaven to come and serve his people. Like Jesus, he was made a governor of his people. After a night survey of the city and the extent of the damage of its walls, Nehemiah began to share his vision with his people to encourage and inspire them to rebuild the walls. Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem leath waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach, nay.2, 17. So they strengthened their hands for this good work, nay, 2.18b. Arise and build. So, the small group of people of Israel got together and began to rebuild the walls. How ridiculous they must have appeared in the eyes of the world around them. A small number of Jews trying to rebuild those huge walls of the city of Jerusalem. Nevertheless, they knew God was on their side. When the devilish trinity of Sanballat, Tobiah and Geshem mocked and ridiculed them, Nehemiah replied, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial, in Jerusalem, nay. 220. Hallelujah. The holy city of God must not remain in a disgraceful state. The religious Nicolaitan Babylonish spirit has broken the foundation of the gospel truth and caused it to lie in ruins for too long. But now that the foundation of the temple is laid, the walls of the holy city must be built up. Amen. But why is there a need to build the walls? Because our Nehemiah is concerned about the holy city. The walls are needed to protect the holy city from the adversary's sneak attacks. They are needed to keep the sacred things of God in so that they will not be profaned or broken apart again to cause the sheep to scatter. You and I, who are the true elect with the token of the Holy Spirit, are part of that holy city. Therefore, we have a responsibility for rebuilding the walls of the holy city and bring glory to God and restore the reality and power of God's presence among his people. We must be dedicated to the task and be willing to work hard to accomplish the purposes of God. So arise and build, and set the things of God in order that we will not be a reproach. Thus saith the Lord. Sinful Shepherds Let us remember that, in this end-time restoration of the word, there are many sinful shepherds who shall have no part in the rebuilding of the walls. They are a cursed lot who is not worthy of the gospel much less being preachers. They exploit the sheep in their folds and enrich themselves at the expense of their sheep. They care not for their sheep. 
Instead of feeding their sheep with spiritual food in due season from the absolute scriptures of the Lord God, they simply feed them with a basketful of sermon quotes of William Branham. Let's read what the Lord told Ezekiel to prophesy in his days. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and so has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals, and because my shepherds did not search for my flock but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths, and it will no longer be food for them. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 1 to 16. Praise the Lord, he's going to rescue his sheep from the snares of these evil shepherds and to bring them back to the homeland where he will feed them rich manna by the hand of one shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will judge every evil shepherd, even other sheep, rams and goats that get into the fold and pollute the clear clean water of the pasture to the detriment of the weaker sheep. As for you, my flock, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will judge between one sheep and another, and between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? Must you also trample the rest of your pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them, he will tend them and be their shepherd. I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 17 to 24. The Wall In Nehemiah chapter 3, we have a record of the builders of the wall and the names of the gates that were repaired. There were ten gates. Spiritually, these gates reflect the life of Christ and the people in the church, the New Jerusalem. The Sheep Gate, B.1, speaks of Christ as the Lamb of God and the Good Shepherd who came to seek his sheep that were lost. Esau.537, JHN, 129, 10.11. The Fish Gate, B.3, speaks of the saved ones as fishers of men, Matt. 419, Prof.11, 30. The Old Gate, B.6, speaks both of the old nature that is crucified in the choice of walking in the good old pathway of righteousness to find rest for one soul, Rom.6, 1-23, Jer, 616. 
The Valley Gate V.13 speaks of humility, suffering and testing. Bill.2, 3-4, 2 Core.1, 3-5. The Dung Gate V.14 speaks of the believer's need to keep clean from all filthiness of the flesh. Gal.5, 16-21, 2 Core.7, 1. The Gate of the Fountain, B.15, speaks of the Holy Spirit filling his people, J.H.N.7, 37-39, E.P.H., 518b. The Water Gate, B.26, speaks of the constant need for the Word of God, J.H.N.4, 10-14, E.P.H., 526, 2 Tim, 215. The Horse Gate, B.28, speaks of the believer's warfare and the good fight of faith, EPH.6, 10-18, 2 Tim, 2-3, 4-7. The East Gate, B.29, speaks of the Son of Righteousness and His Return, Mal.4, 2, Ezek.43, 1-2. And finally, the Gate Mifkod, B.31, speaks of the Saints' assignment and appointment before the judgment seat of Christ in their reign with Christ in the Age of Regeneration, 2 Cor, 510, 1 Cor.3. 9 to 15, Reverend 510. Now, the wall was being built. The adversaries were furious and very indignant. What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Nay.4, 2b, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Nay.4, 3b. They ridiculed and scorned the Jews. What do these miserable Jews think they're doing? Rebuilding the huge wall of the ruined city out of heaps of burnt rubble? Ridiculous. How strong could it be? Even a fox could knock it down. Will they offer their sacrifices again? Impossible. However, what is impossible with men is possible with God. In spite of the ridicule, the wall was soon half its intended height all around the city. It seemed to be an impossible task, but the work progressed well because the people set their hearts and minds on accomplishing the task. From the very beginning of the task, Nehemiah constantly prayed for God's help. The Jews were there in Jerusalem to rebuild what was once their glorious city, and to reconstruct the wall to protect their most precious possession, the temple. Yes, they were able to offer their sacrifices again. They completed the work of rebuilding the wall in spite of strong opposition and threats of attack by the adversaries who had vowed to come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease, nay, 4.11. They trusted God and at the same time kept vigilant watch over what had been entrusted to them. God was in their midst to protect for them. Nobody could stop the work of God. Nobody could fight the word of God. Everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so build it, nay.4, 17b18a. Hallelujah, the work and word, weapon, of God go hand in hand. Read Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 4 to 23. When the early church fell into the hands of wicked men, the wall, ministry, was broken down and the people of God were taken captives into mystery, Babylon, for a millennium of spiritual darkness. However, when God sent the reformers, the people of God began to receive the light but the wall was not properly built up as the church was much involved with rituals and politics. There were too many breaches and the enemies kept sneaking in. This condition persisted until the second, Elijah of Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 to 6 came to turn the heart of the children of God to the faith of their apostolic fathers. Beloved, God has a wall built up in this hour for the church which has returned to her homeland where her true temple, of God's word, is. God has also has set a watch to protect that sacred word and his saints. There are no breaches in the wall for the enemies to sneak in to fluster the people with false teachings and cause disorder in the assembly. Every seed word child of God needs to have the breaches in his life closed up, or else the devil will slip in and cause chaos to his life. Amen. We need to have the revelation of God and know what he is doing in this hour to close up any breaches in our life. Watchmen. I believe the wall of the New Jerusalem is built up. And our Nehemiah has placed watchmen at strategic locations along the wall. Although the wall is finished, it is not perfect. God is still working on perfecting the fivefold ministry, which is the wall of the holy city. He is still enhancing the wall and reinforcing the watch over it, even as the bride presses on towards perfection. 
He is leading the ministry to a place where the Spirit of God will have total preeminence in the watchmen's lives for the perfection of the saints. The ascension gifts will be under the full control of the Holy Spirit and will demonstrate the revelation of the Spirit, as they did in the first two decades of the early church. Note, the word perfecting means complete furnishing. That is, the saints, under the present fivefold ministry, will be thoroughly shaped and equipped by God. This is a continuous process. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, Paul used the word perfection to denote its consummation. That's why he said not to lay again. In simple terms, it means don't stay put and keep going over the same things you have learned, but move on to something else until we are completely consummated in Christ Jesus. Notice, on the wall of the Jerusalem, every watchman and builder had a weapon in one hand while they worked with the other. Amen. A true servant of God always carries the sword of the Lord in his hand as he carries out the work of God. The sword of the Lord is the word. For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Heb. 412 CF. Reverend 116. And our Nehemiah is the director of the work. CF. Nay.4, 18 to 20. He is the only one who is able to give the proper sound of the trumpet. Amen. A man is a liar who claims that God has called him to the wall but only carries with him a compilation of sermon quotes of William Branham or any other persons. It's either the sacred, s, word of God or not at all. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? 1 Cor.148. No matter how much one desires to be, if God has not called him, he cannot make himself a minister of the gospel. There is order in the house of God. Amen. In the fivefold ministry, not everyone has the same measure of faith in any given ministry. We cannot compare one apostle to another apostle or judge a ministry by another. We could and should check by the scriptures whether a ministry is scriptural or not. The scriptures is the only standard by which we can judge a ministry, cf. Acts chapter 11 verses 1 to 18. We should have enough God-given spirit and common sense to recognize the true ministry of God and to receive it. CF. JHN.6, 28 to 29. A man, who is called to stand for the word of God, is not going to spare the feelings of other people, especially those who go about distorting the truth. Open rebuke and reproof are often necessary. CF. EPH.6, 19 to 20. 2 Tim.4, 2, Tit, 1 13, 2 15. The Holy Spirit, through the leaders in the church, disciplines the people with the word. The word judges everyone whether the cleric or the congregation. There is no hierarchy in the church. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise at the same time said I unto the people, Let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 21 to 22. Beloved, you are not protected from your adversary the devil, who is a roaring lion, walks about, seeking whom he may devour, 1 Pet.5, 8, if you do not stay within the wall of the city of God. Demons cannot penetrate the wall of true fellowship which the Lord has assigned guards to constantly watch over the souls of them that dwell therein. Paul said, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Heb. 13.17 How can believers be protected if they keep away from the assembly and fellowship within the wall of the city of God? Evil Report When the adversaries knew that the wall of Jerusalem was almost complete, they planned to harm Nehemiah, the leader of the people. They had tried, many times, to distract Nehemiah and divert his energies from rebuilding the wall by inviting him to their convention. Nehemiah rejected their invitations because he was able to discern their real motives. Amen, for how can two walk together unless they agree? Read Nehemiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. And when the adversaries failed in their efforts to stop the construction of the wall, they tried a new approach, centering their attacks on Nehemiah's character. They attacked him personally with rumors, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. 
And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now therefore, and let us take counsel together, nay point six, six to seven. Oh, the craftiness of the enemies, such is the subtility of many Branamites. Many of them have tried to invite me to their so-called Bible conventions. Many of them have attacked me with rumors and false reports that Brother Gon has made himself the eighth messenger. Like Brother, he has put himself above Brother Branham. He has compromised the word. Such innuendos and rumors are aimed at causing misunderstandings and confusions among the believers who have returned to the foundation. They are also using these same rumors to put fear in the truth seekers in their own assemblies to prevent them from leaving their Branhamite organizations. And like Nehemiah, I could sincerely say unto them, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart, nay point six, eight. They have fabricated them out of their evil hearts. Several hireling prophets of poor nations, who regularly receive a certain sum of money from their sponsors in rich nations like USA, Canada and Europe, have even prophesied against me and attacked me with evil reports. But praise be to God, he is a righteous judge who will judge the evil hearts. The wall is finished. So the wall was finished, nay point six, fifteen a. And Nehemiah appointed rulers, guards from among the residents of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, and everyone to be over against his house, nay point seven, three b. Likewise, our Nehemiah has also appointed watchmen from their own places and assigned them to look after their own local assemblies in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded, nay point seven, four. To paraphrase, this verse reads, Now the city was large and spacious, but there were few people living in it because not many houses had been built yet, that is, more houses could be built. Yes, the holy city New Jerusalem is also a large and spacious city and our Lord is building more houses in it, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, JHN.14, 2-3. Jesus is still preparing houses for those who are willing to come into the New Jerusalem. After the appointment of leaders from among the people, the children of Israel gathered themselves as one man, and asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the Law of Moses, and read to them. Beloved, it is not surprising that after so long in captivity when they could hardly get a chance to hear the word of God for seventy years, they had the yearning to hear the word again. During all those years in captivity, all they knew were some traditions mixed with Babylonish ideologies. How could they know what was in the book of the law of God when they, except for the very elderly ones, had never heard it read? Finally, they had the opportunity to hear the word, yes, and they listened attentively to the word of God. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women, and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 3 If the wall wasn't finished, the people would certainly be unable to come together and listen to the word. Why, because of their enemies, but with the wall built, they were safe within the city from enemy attack. Likewise, in this end time age, God has the wall of his holy city, bride church, raised up. Unless we have the revelation of the importance of this wall and what God is doing in this hour of time, we will never be able to really settle down to understand the word of God. Yes, God has given us a prophet messenger, William Branham, with a message to bring us back to the word. We have the foundation of the temple of the word of God before us. Remember, we cannot approach God without his word. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me, JHN, 14 to 6. You cannot approach God without coming through this temple, Christ Jesus, the living word. The word of God is the Shekinah glory of God. The word that came forth from God in the beginning was God and was made flesh 2000 years ago. The invisible God became the visible God. The great majority of Christians are lost in the various denominational traditions, thinking they could approach God in their own ways and on their own terms. Every denomination claims to have the word, but when they mix traditions with the word they can never approach God and worship him in spirit and in truth. For God is seeking such to worship him, JHN, 423. The Bible said that God is light, and in him is no darkness, tradition, at all, 1 JHN, 1 to 5. Saints of God, we have been brought back to the word by the message and the wall has been built. The wall is the work the Holy Spirit is doing through the fivefold ministry. It is to safeguard the sacred things, the word and the true worshippers of God, from the wicked works of the evil one. As Eve was seduced by the serpent before Adam could get to know her, the early church was also seduced and bewitched by the enemy before Christ could bring her to perfection. The church then went through a time of purging. With the Reformation, the light began to pave the way for the operation of the gifts of the Spirit and the sounding of the message, to turn the heart of the children to their fathers. When the hearts of the children of God are turned to their fathers, 
then it is time for them to sit and learn their apostolic father's faith. And this can only be achieved by the apostolic watchmen who are assigned to the wall of the fivefold ministry. Without true revelation of the wall, many Christians have misinterpreted the purpose and position of the different ministries of the ascension gifts. Hence, strange doctrines abound. The word opened and taught. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people winking face, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, and Bani, and Sherebiah, Hamim, Akab, Shabbatai, Hodijah, Masaya, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites, caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God, mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept, when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat, and to drink, and to send portions, and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 5 to 12. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. Amen. There is no substitute for the book. A gospel minister of God must open the word of God in the presence of the congregation of God's people and preach from it. He must not only read from the word of God, but must give a clear and detailed explanation of it so that the people could understand it. Supposing Ezra was a walking Bible and could recite the law of Moses without opening the book. Would the people be moved with emotion? Would they respond with the same intensity of feeling? Definitely not. But when Ezra opened the sacred book of the law of God in the sight of all the people, they all stood up, they all lifted their hands, and they all bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple, PSA, 119 to 130. That's right, and besides Ezra, the rulers and leaders of Jerusalem also read in the book in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. Oh how the Jews went about rejoicing when they heard the word. They rejoiced even more because they understood the word of God. Just as the denominations have their man-appointed and man-ordained ministers, the end-time message movement has many self-appointed ministers. Some are loners, or drifters, the come-and-go preachers, who stand alone and do not associate with any assembly of believers. A word-loving pastor should never let such ministers pollute his pulpit. All these ministers are a divided lot. Some of them preach only from the sermon books of William Branham while the others are often unable to make any sense of the subject they try to preach from the Bible. These are the foolish laborers who do not have the divine calling to handle the fire of God's word. They have neither the spirit nor the truth of the word. They often leave their hearers more confused than enlightened. Saints, you ought to know them which labor among you. 1 Thess.5, 12. Avoid such preachers for the labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Eclee, 10 15. However, a God-called minister will not hasten to preach and teach the word until he has a revelation of the word as inspired by the spirit. The word must be rightly divided, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little, Esa.28, 10 CF, 2 Tim, 2.15. Gifted Ministers The watchmen of Israel were strategically placed on the walls of the city. Some found themselves on higher position than others because the city of Jerusalem was built on hilly land. There were also several watchtowers at certain strategic sections along the wall. These watchtowers were vantage points from where principal watchmen, who were placed there, could look out to the farthest possible distance for any approaching danger. The moment the enemies were seen sneaking up against the city, these principal watchmen would sound the trumpet. As the warning sound echoed along and around the wall, through the other watchmen, all the citizens would be alerted and ready for battle. Now, all these watchmen are a type of the ministers of the fivefold ministry, which is the wall of the city New Jerusalem. Five is the number of God's grace. We have five fingers on each hand. The fivefold ministry is therefore God's gift and grace to his church. It is short of nothing. Jesus Christ has placed men of different gifts in different positions within the fivefold ministry, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. This is God's perfect order in the ministry. There are also different levels of anointing among similar gifts, some hundredfold, some eightyfold, some sixtyfold, some fortyfold and some twentyfold. Each of them is responsible for watching over the souls of the saints of God to keep them from sneaky and deceptive attacks of the adversary of God. 
but the principal watchmen on the wall, ministry, are the apostles, followed by the prophets. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, Rom.11.29. God gives gifts to men whom he calls into the church for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ, cf. EPH.4, 4-16. No special qualifications are stated in the scriptures for one who is called into the fivefold ministry or ascension gifts. God knows how to equip those whom he calls into his ministry. The gifts of God are divinely ordained before the foundation of the world. Whom God calls, God will surely supply all his needs. The qualifications laid down by Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 13 and Titus chapter 1 verses 7 to 9 for bishops and deacons do not apply to ministers in the fivefold ministry. Bishops or elders and deacons are positions of leadership appointed by the apostles to serve in the local churches. Normally more than one elder is appointed to oversee the flock in each assembly. The ministry of elders is restricted to their respective local assembly. There may or may not be a God-ordained pastor in a local assembly. Many people tend to think that elders are pastors. Not all elders are pastors, although all pastors are elders. A pastor is a gift within the Ascension Gifts Ministry. An elder is appointed by the ministers of the Ascension Gifts Ministry, CF. Tip point one, five. All true ministers of God are ordained of God and sent to perform the different functions in the works of God. Pastors, shepherds are called to feed and care for the flocks. The teachers teach the word of God. A teacher does not shepherd an assembly unless he is also an ordained pastor. A pastor, who is a shepherd, also teaches the word. Evangelists bring or proclaim the good news. Because they move about from place to place to proclaim the gospel of Christ, evangelists do not usually shepherd an assembly. The apostles are sent forth, not only to preach the gospel, but also to set the church in order according to the word of God, to establish the believers on the foundation of the word and to defend the truth of the word. 1 Cor.11, 34b, EPH, 2.20, Rom, 111, 15.17-20, Phil.1, 7.17. The doctrines of the Bible are also called the Doctrine of the Apostles, Acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 3, 2, 42. The prophets have the gift of prophecies and some other spiritual gifts. They are also teachers of the word, Acts chapter 13 verse 1, 15, 32. They edify, exhort and confirm, i.e. to support further, to set steadfast the teachings of God's word and his work. They may also bring personal messages and interpret dreams. The apostles and prophets are the plumb line holders of the word. Note. Many people tend to think that when a man is called into the ministry, his wife is also called. This is a tradition of the organized church with no basis in the Bible. The only ministry that God gives to a minister's wife, and any Christian's wife, is that of a good housewife. She is no different from the other believing women in the church, except that she be accorded proper respect as a minister's wife. Apostles and Prophets Today, the Christian denominations are divided over the existence and roles of apostles and prophets in this end time. Some fundamentalists and evangelicals teach that the apostles and prophets were used of Christ only in the beginning of the church to lay the foundations of the church, and with the completion of the canon of the New Testament, the apostolic and prophetic ministries ceased. On the other hand, the Pentecostal and Charismatic movements have many apostles and prophets who pride themselves on their complete understanding or revelation of the Bible. Sincere Christians who follow such apostles and prophets are at the mercy of their authoritarian leadership and fanciful interpretations of the scriptures. Unlike the Berians, C.F., Acts chapter 17 verses 10 to 11, they are often gullible and careless about the scriptures to detect any unbiblical teaching. Therefore, these Christians are easily misled into a cultic direction. Many books have been written about the fivefold ministry and the respective roles of the five ministry offices. The views of the writers vary depending upon their religious affiliations. Even in the end time message movement, the believers' views of the fivefold ministry also vary depending on their understanding of the message. The majority of them, especially the Branhamites, are vague in their understanding of this subject as they tend to